Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Tanut here. Well, today I have a review for you of the Case Labs uh, Mini ITX box, the Mercury S3. Now, um, with motherboard manufacturers making you know more powerful and featureful motherboards in a Mini ITX size, and then you add into that uh, GPUs that are even more powerful and also smaller and running cooler uh, with lower power requirements. And then you add to that, uh, you know, SSD prices coming down tremendously. Those are obviously very small. And uh, hard drives um, growing capacity, you know, two terabyte, three terabyte, four terabyte hard drives now, uh, you know, becoming more and more available. And those prices are now, after the flood, uh, you know, waters have settled out in Thailand, prices are starting to come back somewhat more in line with what they used to be. So uh, with all those things, you can really build a quite a powerful uh, system in a small space and uh, that's where case labs has actually you know gone to now they've come out with a mini itx case here the uh, at mercury s3 that uh, is uh, you know perfect for that kind of a build as with all of the case labs cases you have the flexibility for both air and water cooling now specifically with water cooling and the number of options that you have in the s3 mercury case you can build quite a powerful well water cooled mini ITX rig and if you really wanted to maximize the water cooling capability uh, by growing the footprint a little and adding the pedestal option uh, you can really create a water cooled beast so let's take a look now up close at each of the options and the features that I have here and I'll take you through some of the others that are also available for this case first of all before we get into any detail on uh, the S3 case in particular uh, just general features of case labs cases uh, they're made of uh, aluminum. They're all aluminum construction, and it's not made from any thin stock aluminum. It's made some pretty thick, durable uh, aluminum so that it can uh, support water cooling and the various uh, types of mounts and features that you'll find in these cases. So it's a good, sturdy aluminum stock. Uh, quick access, uh, basically, um, the panels that are, that are put on these cases have uh, quick, quick access, so you can actually pop off the panels and if you can see here you've got uh, some little um, ball tip points that are designed to mount into these clips that are on these cases and I'll show you that in a little more detail so uh, quick access to uh, pop on and pop off the panels um, the motherboard trays well, might as well just keep the panel off and so the motherboard trays are screwed on here with four screws that allow you to take this particular tray right out and mount your motherboard uh, onto it. So it's got a removable motherboard tray feature as in all of the Case Lab cases. This one just happens to be horizontal because of the uh, design nature for the ITX uh, case in this particular uh, example. Another feature of Case Lab's cases are their drop-in or their side radiator mounts and I have some examples of those that I'll show you but uh, you know if you wanted to mount a, uh, a radiator for push-pull in your case or uh, you know you know what that can be pretty difficult to do but you can get uh, optional drop-ins and side mounts uh, then you'll see that in the pedestal that I have that allow you to do that um, externally from your case and then mount that whole assembly right into your case or the pedestal in the, in the, in the example that I'll show you. So they've thought about all that and to make it easier for you to be able to get it as uh, nice and neat and clean as you want and make it easier to mount aside rather than having to be a contortionist in many cases and having your head and part of your body inside of the case holding up a rad to mount it and then you know then then having to again get an even tighter mount fans and things to it. So. Uh, you'll see that in uh, some of the options that I have here. All right, so uh, let me uh, take you through this particular case, and uh, let's talk about the uh, Mercury S3. All right, so the S3 case dimensions are 14.94 inches tall by 10.54 inches wide by 15.03 inches deep, or 380 millimeters by 268 millimeters by 382 millimeters for my metric friends. Now, um, colors, uh, what you see here is not a primer gray. I don't know if the lighting's doing it justice, but it is a uh, metallic silver. It, it's a one-off case that uh, Case Labs did for me. 
Uh, they did have some uh, of this type of paint available, so it's a one-off. Um, it's not available um, from them. You can get your case in a primer and then paint it whatever you color you want. Um, but this is something they were kind enough, and I'm very uh, honored that they would able to do, be able to do that for me. Now, uh, what you can get, though, uh, is a, a matte black or a matte white. You can get a primer gray or a dark gray. And uh, then you can also do two tones. You can get a black and white, a black and primer gray, a black and dark gray, a white and primer gray, a white and dark gray, and a primer gray and dark gray. So those are all options uh, right out of the box if you go to the website to select you can you have all of those options that you can work from and also um, something new I know that they do have uh, a blue and also a green so but you would have to um, probably contact Jim at Case Labs and uh, talk about those but those are color options that they are adding for this case now uh, with regards to uh, panels uh, let's talk about the top. I'll tilt this down here for you to see. Uh, this top uh, that I, you see here is an option, but standard, you can get a standard ventilated top. So it would be standard panel with the ventilation. Uh, you can also get it complete solid top. And those are, uh, you know, those are no cost, those two options. Then you can get a clear window, which is what I did, and I will remove this, uh, the protective uh, coatings on here so you can see this guy uh, in its full glory. Uh, shortly, but uh, and then the other option is a 36 millimeter um, top that you can get. So uh, and that's ventilated top, but it's taller so that well, if you have a drop-in mount in the top and have a radiator, you can do a push-pull configuration uh, on your case. So again, uh, it's a little bit of a, a, a cap, if you will, that uh, stands up there that gives you the uh, room for your fan so that you can get some on the top, and of course the inside and the bottom is not a problem. Now, uh, left and right panels is exactly the same. This particular case, you will see, uh, I also have a windowed, and those are options. Um, but basically, you can get, uh, again, a, a ventilated panel. You can get it uh, solid. And then for a few extra dollars, you can get a standard window, uh, which doesn't go all the way down. Standard window comes about to about here, and then the XL window. And again, if you go to the website, you'll see all of these but I will remove this coating so you can see these guys here. So um, that's the left and right panels. And now what I'm going to do is uh, give me a minute. I'm going to pop off the uh, panels here, and then we can talk about um, mounts for the top. Oh, and the other thing that you then probably have noticed is that even though this is the metallic silver, I did have it two-toned. I had the interior all done in black. So uh, I have a custom build uh, coming up. Obviously, I'll put a link up to this. Uh, at the end of the video so that if you like you can uh, follow the build and and see what I do with this case but um, but I have the uh, the metallic silver and then the black interior uh, and also some pieces that are going to be accented in uh, in the uh, silver metallic as well that you'll see as I go through them all right let's talk about the uh, the mounts for the top so if you want to add radiator to your system you or fans you can buy the top with a universal mount that has um, positions for uh, you know 240 millimeter rad or 280 but that replaces this uh, frame top so it's a fixed uh, panel that you can uh, have the e either options to go with the 240 or the 280 in that one solid panel then I mentioned uh, you can get uh, drop-in mounts now the drop-in mounts are options um, but those drop-in mounts would secure to these six holes that are on here there's three on this side and three on this side and basically you can get them with uh, just a drop-in mount for uh, 120 by 2 so that you can mount um, a, two, you know, a 240 millimeter rad in there. Uh, and again, the, the beauty of the drop-in mounts is you can assemble the radiator and the fans uh, outside of your system, outside of the case, and then, then mount it right, drop it right in and screw it down to the top of the frame here. You can also get a, uh, a universal mount that is a drop-in, so that's got the capability to do either a 120 by 2 or, or a 140 by 2. And then the other option is you can get a drop-in with, uh, with just a, a blank mount. So uh, now this one doesn't have, uh, this is just an open, uh, open case right here so that I can show off the inside from the top with the window option that I have for the top cover. Next let's talk about the I.O. The front I.O. basically 
The only option they have, either you, you get it stock, just the power and reset, and these, these are a blank, or you can get the USB 3.0 option, which is what this is right here. And those cables are nicely sleeved. Um, the power reset are nicely sleeved, and they give you plenty of length. And then you have uh, your molded um, 3.0 cable with the motherboard header right here. So those are your uh, front I.O. features. And then let's talk about the flex bay. Now, you can get the flex bay panels here, the front panels here. You can get, either get them solid or ventilated. All right. And then uh, you also have, which is what I have here, I have this, uh, the uh, single bay uh, ventilated. And then I have here the option for that you can mount uh, fans or radiators. So this particular case is set up to be able to take... Um, you know, two 120 millimeter fans or and uh, or radiator mounted to it. So uh, that is a flex bay option. Now, if you order this option, you will only get a front panel uh, for this one spot up here, and you will get this mounted. You will not get any panels to uh, mount in there if you decided to change and just go back to a solid or uh, just ventilated front. So you need to consider that. You can buy them certainly if you want to do that. Uh, but they save you some money, so if you do plan to put a radiator in the front of your case, then you just pull, select that option and uh, you will get it already uh, painted the way you want it and installed. All right, now let's uh, take a look at the uh, back of the case. So the back of the case here, you have your, uh, your fan mounts. You can mount either a uh, 120 or a 140 millimeter fan back there. Uh, you have um, some, uh, some access point holes here that are currently plugged, but you do get a set of uh, grommets that you can use uh, and plug into there if you were planning to uh, run uh, any tubing or anything outside of your case. Um, the motherboard is uh, tray is uh, accesses right there, and you get um, you know it has capability for three slots, and also you will get three three panels that come with the case. And uh, these are black that I currently have, and these they're already installed. And then you see your uh, point for mounting your power supply down along the bottom right there. Now let's talk about the uh, interior space. Now the dimensions up here of the upper bay space is 14.38 inches long by 9.56 inches wide by 9.43 inches tall or uh, 365 millimeters by 243 millimeters by 240 millimeters. Now, uh, one of the things that I'll point out is the distance between the top of this uh, bay here, and by the way, there's a total of seven, seven bays here. This flex bay for the radiator takes up six bays, and this top one is the seventh. That's your standard five and a quarter inch drive bay. Now, the, the, the distance between the top of this second bay and the top is 74 millimeters. So just keep that in mind uh, for space that you might need. And uh, you know when you're especially when you're mounting a radiator in the top, and if you might want to put a radiator in the front, that's how much space the clearance you have from the top of this to the top of the uh, uh, the roof there. Now the space in the bottom here is plenty, and you get a standard ATX power supply. And basically as long as you need, right? So uh, there is actually a plate that comes with here that, that covers this up, which is which I removed. Um, but I mean, basically, you, you can have it as long as you want. You're not limited by any particular um, constraint in or with regards to the, the length of your power supply. So that's nice. All right, let's take a look at uh, where the disk drives mount. And the S3 comes factory with one three and a half inch disk drive mount and a SSD mount that will hold two SSDs. We also have the pass-through for your power and your SATA data. And I'll take those out and we'll take and a closer close look. look at the disk drive mounting system here on the side of the uh, S3. Basically by removing some nuts which are come off of some studs that are pressed into this panel, you can easily remove your disk drive mount. And the disk drive mount has these uh, holes that allow you to use some anti-vibration um, rubber mounts 
and screws to secure your hard drive to your plate. So uh, that is uh, easily removed. And the same thing with the SSD. You remove those and you have, and this is where you can see there are two mounting points on either side for screwing in your SSDs. Now you can elect to go for mounting two hard drives. Now I had this plate uh, painted to give some of uh, you know a contrast inside here but basically same thing you would uh, then uh, install your uh, disk drives in here and then you would just slide this in here and you will have your disk drives mounted. Now they do protrude a little bit but remember the side panels give some more space so you can get two three and a half inch disk drives and then I also have one here for four SSDs so this allows you to mount four SSDs in the bottom section here of your case and again all you got to do is uh, line up the holes and then put the mounts back in and you screw back in your your uh, your SSDs and your hard drive now one of the things that uh, they also have done and this is an option this is the motherboard tray that you saw they also have a stealth plate that allow you to mount two SSDs on the bottom of the motherboard tray. So those SSDs would be mounted coming out here and you lay your uh, motherboard tray back in there you would have the capacity to be able to plug in two SSDs right underneath there. So a place that really nobody would see. They're out of the way but it's very smart, nice design and use of uh, what potentially would be some dead space. So uh, here there's a look from the other side. Really, if you didn't notice it before, it's because it's the plate that's right down here. Normally, the uh, motherboard tray does not have this plate mounted, so it's just four screws and this tray comes out, and then you just have your base plate with plenty of access underneath. Now, with the case, you get three sets of FlexPay device mounts. You get one short set, and this is great for mounting your fan controller or something that just doesn't necessarily have a lot of depth to it. So basically you would screw, secure your fan controller to either side and then I'll show you, you remove the top uh, flex bay or any of the flex bays, uh, you remove the uh, filler panel and then you would just mount your device right into the front of there. So this is a one short and two long. So if you're using optical drive or uh, any other long device, you have the mounting holes to be able to mount on either side of your device and then you would then uh, put that inside of the flex bay. Uh, at the top. So those are all standard uh, with the uh, S3 case. So what I have for you here now is a look at some of the flex bay options uh, for this case. And uh, what I did is I have some of the flex bay adapters uh, brackets. These are the longer ones that I showed you. Um, I mounted on this optical drive. So I have them mounted on either side. And I'll show you how to get installed. We also have just a full blank panel. Uh, so if you do not order a uh, flex bay adapter for the radiator or fans. This is what will come in your case. You can either get this or vented, a vented version. And then here's another solid uh, five and a quarter inch, just a single bay. This is a triple and this is a single. And then what I also have here, just to show you how the flex bay uh, fan and radiator mounts work, this is a uh, flex bay with a, for a fan or a radiator. It's the same as the one that you see in the case right now, except that is a, a dual for a radiator. And what I've done here is I'll take over the cover piece. You have, I mounted a fan in here and I just tacked it in with a couple of screws. But if you were mounting a radiator uh, to this, basically what you would do is you put your radiator here and you see the holes, the 120 millimeter holes here. You'd mount your radiator and your fan and you would put the screws through your fan that'll go through this plate and into your radiator. And that's how you would secure your radiator uh, onto it. And then you just simply take a couple of screws and you would screw this panel in. And then I'll go ahead and mount these inside of the case so you can see, but this would be the way um, you would mount the uh, fan and if you had the radiator hanging off of it um, right into the front of the case. So let me uh, turn the case around and we'll, uh, we'll do that. Actually, uh, we should be able to do it pretty easily since we're going to uh, just pop off the front panel just like all of the other panels here. And then what you have is some screws that uh, 
that hold in the uh, flex bay mounts. So I'll just take out a couple of screws for the top one. Now as opposed to standard cases, which usually you slide the device in from the front, the way this mounting system works is you'll actually slide a device in from this side and there are a couple of pins that are located on either side of the bay. So you would actually just slide the device in. Okay. So the pins have it aligned up. Then you do is you take your uh, the uh, screws from the that come with the case labs case and you tighten it up. And then you have one and let's put the other one in. There you go. So there we have a five and a quarter inch device installed in the bay and it's supported firmly uh, with the, the use of the pins and the screw coming through. Now the same thing you would do for uh, a radiator or the fan, you would remove these and then you would place the, uh, the uh, bracket with the uh, fan and or radiator into the front and then put these screws back in and you have your flex bay devices uh, installed and mounted. So it's very simple, uh, very easy to use, very easy to install. So those are uh, pretty much the features with regards to the S3 um, main case. Now what I'm going to do is show you the pedestal. And here is the Mercury S3 pedestal. Now with regards to color, same color options that you have for the uh, S3 main case you can also get for the pedestal. You know, the matte black, the matte white, the primer gray, the dark gray, and then any of the same two-tone combinations that uh, were offered for the S3 uh, case itself. Now, as far as options are concerned, first we'll take a look at the front. You see it has a uh, triple um, flex bay uh, panel. This particular one happens to be solid. You can use any of the uh, flex bay uh, panel options, you know, the vented, the solid, the, uh, you know, even the ones to mount the fan. You can use all of those in the exact same uh, place down here since it's uh, from the same base design. Now I'm going to take you around to the back. The next option here in the back, you can go with a um, single 120 millimeter uh, you know, hex mesh uh, panel in the back. So that's no cost. That's, that's the stock version of it. Um, here what you see here is an option. I have two um, basic uh, of the uh, power supply panels and you can get them solid like I have or you can get them vented and then now again uh, that's that's an option for this case. Now the other options you can get are uh, on the bottom and I have the casters I tacked them onto the case before but you have casters down on the bottom uh, here so that's an option that you can get to, uh, to mount here or you could just you know use the feet from your case if you're gonna be mounting your S3 of course on top of it. Now on the side We'll remove this panel and we'll talk about the radiator mount options. Now there is only one S3 pedestal radiator mount and that's what you see in here. There's actually two in here. There's one I have on this side and one on the other side. And basically this mount will hold a 120 by 2 or a 140 by 2 uh, radiator. Obviously you can see it's inset here so there's room to mount a set of fans and still have the panel on uh, the outside without any issue. And then uh, as far as space on the inside, you can see that it is uh, got a lot of room. And, uh, and I've actually seen at least the, uh, the, the demo uh, photos show a couple of uh, 60 mil radiators in there. And, and actually, I'm going to be doing that. So uh, certainly 45, 30 is not an issue. And you could put a monster in there, but you would uh, not be able to put two monsters you would, uh, you know, it's 180 mil thick uh, rad. And the dimensions uh, inside of this case are 15 inches by 10.59 inches by 7.72 inches or 382 millimeters by 268 millimeters by 196 millimeters. So uh, this case is very light, aluminum is five pounds. But that, those are the dimensions to be able to fit your rads and fans in there. So as I said in the beginning, having a uh, pedestal gives you the uh, option to really turn uh, what already is a great and flexible water cooling case to uh, 
keep your uh, powerful new components nice and cool um, by adding this pedestal you have so much more um, cooling power uh, and of course if you, you saw my uh, top of my case uh, the S3 has windows all around it so um, if you're going to stuff it with water cooling um, basically a lot of that space is going to be filled up by uh, you know radiators and fans um, what I prefer to do on my particular build is to have uh, all the uh, key water cooling down here and show off the rest of the guts inside of that case so again if you're interested um, please uh, follow the link um, that I put up and uh, you'll be able to uh, follow the build logs for the for this system that I'll be building all right well let me put the panels back on this guy and uh, get the s3 back on the table and we'll uh, wrap up this review so there you have it uh, that's the uh, mercury s3 case with the pedestal option from case labs um, well I think that case labs is just about thought of everything that you would want in a mini itx build uh, very nice design flexible and superb for uh, adding water cooling and, and again as I said in the beginning you know nowadays with the uh, low power requirements of video cards and the uh, great features and uh, capability of a lot of the mini itx motherboards that manufacturers are coming out with coupled with ssd prices going low and hard disk drive capacity growing you could fit quite a powerful system uh, inside of a little case like this and if you're really into water cooling and you want to create a, uh, a monster rig um, well adding that pedal slot option is a no-brainer so uh, again i think uh, case labs covered it all everything that you would need and if you want to add that extra bit you can do that and if you didn't already know um, i'm a big uh, fan of windows on cases and uh, but the one thing that of course you got to consider is uh, you know what are you going to show off in there so uh, uh, i i plan to have some uh, nice bits and hopefully do a nice job of uh, customizing the inside of this case and i started it with the outstanding paint uh, job from uh, case labs the uh, metallic silver and coupled with uh, kind of a two-tone interior that'll be both uh, silver and black and uh, we'll see how it comes out but uh, if you're interested in this case you can go to the description below and you will find direct links to case labs uh, for this particular case and uh, also uh, uh, please uh, if you're interested follow my build on uh, YouTube and uh, if you like this video please like and favorite and if you're so inclined please subscribe again big thanks to case labs for sponsoring this case and uh, giving me the opportunity to bring it to you I uh, hope you like it and I uh, hope you will follow me and watch some more so that's it from Ron's and up thanks for watching